apparently 2008 was a great year for gaming, and I missed out on two of the biggest titles. Both Fable 2 and Fallout 3 won numerous awards, and as such have both had Game of the Year editions released since then. Like I reviewed Fable 2 in anticipation for Fable 3 this fall, this week I spent playing Bethesda's Fallout 3 in anticipation for Fallout New Vegas this fall. The Game of the Year edition comes with all five of the game's DLCs, and I'll be covering each of those in separate videos throughout the week. Now, I know I'm not the only one that missed out on this title upon release, so if you haven't yet played it, or if you're a longtime fan, let's check it out. Released in 2008 for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC, here's Fallout 3. incredibly rich and immersive RPG, I don't want to drop too many details about the plot to spoil what's going to happen, so I'll try to be as generic as possible. The year is 2277. 200 years have passed since the tragic events that destroyed the world as we know it with nuclear war, forcing all survivors into massive underground shelters called vaults. The game opens with one of the most interesting and creative character creation sequences I've yet experienced, as you see the world through the eyes of a baby escaping their mother's womb as she dies giving birth. You're a survivor, born in Vault 101, a vault that's been sealed for many years. No one is allowed in, no one is allowed out, ever. The first hour or so is played at various stages of your character's life, from learning to walk as a toddler, to your 10th birthday party, to the day you take a skills assessment test that determines what job you'll undertake for the remainder of your miserable life inside the vault. Your father, the doctor and scientist that delivered your birth, has escaped the vault without telling anyone. You follow suit and the remainder of the story revolves around searching for your father, finding out why he left, and potentially assisting him in whatever endeavor he was involved with in the first place. Without revealing too much, the story is essentially about saving the world. Names Lucas Sims, town sheriff, and mayor too, when the need arises. I don't know why, but I like you, boy. Something tells me you're all right. Fallout 3 is simply a massive title. I played through on the medium difficulty setting and completed the primary story without all the side missions or fully exploring the game world in about 25 hours. I could have easily spent at least double that had I had the time to do it. On top of that, I've got five DLCs that I can tackle in addition to everything I missed out on, but I did run into a little quirk with that. The Xbox 360 version of the game comes on two DVDs. The first contains the game, and the second contains all the DLC. Apparently, you're supposed to put the second DVD in first to install all the content, and then play the game off the first disc. Well, I played through the entire game before I realized that I needed to install the DLC, so I didn't get to play some of them at all the right points in time. The instruction manual tells me that I should have inserted the second disc first, but I never read the manuals first anyway. I think this should have been a bit more intuitive. The entire game takes place in the wastelands that remain in what used to be Washington, D.C. The game world is massive and incredibly immersive as you're forced to survive with little resources and you truly are in control of how the game will play out for you as the world is completely open for you to explore and participate in any and all of the missions and side missions at your leisure and all of your interactions, be it through dialogue or physical actions, will determine how the story plays out for you. Will you be a vault-dwelling hero, a thuggish scavenger, or a drug addict on the run from the law? The choice is completely up to you. Fallout 3 is just a straight, hardcore RPG with elements of a first-person shooter and a survival horror thrown into the mix. You constantly have to worry about ammo, weapons, repairs, health, radiation poisoning, inventory management, and staying the hell alive long enough to complete your objectives. Early in the game, your father gives you an item worn on your wrist called a Pip-Boy 3000. Not only is this used as your only form of light in this extremely dark game, but it also acts as an interface to manage pretty much everything else in the game. Through the Pip-Boy, you'll manage your quests, the world map, your large inventory of items, aids, weapons, and armor, as well as manage your health and radiation levels. You'll pretty much pull this bad boy up every couple of minutes as you play. 
As you explore the massive wastelands, you'll discover new locations that will automatically be added to your map when you get close enough to them. Once you've discovered a new location, you can instantly travel to it again whenever you like through the Pit Boy interface, which is a godsend considering how long it takes to walk everywhere. Along with worrying about your health and ammunition, you'll also need to be concerned with item degradation. Over time, all of your weapons and armor will degrade, dealing less damage and offering less protection over time until you repair it. You can pay another to repair your gear for you, or you can repair it yourself with parts of other like items, which is extremely important as it makes your gear better and frees up some of your inventory. Like all RPGs, as you kill enemies, complete quests, and use special abilities during conversations, you'll earn experience which will level you up. Each level allows you to allocate points toward various stats and skills, as well as allow you to unlock a new perk. Perks are special buffs that provide exceptional bonuses to stats and abilities, and really allow you to tailor your character and gameplay style to your liking. Finally, something unique to the title is the Vault Tech Assisted Targeting System, or VATS, that allows you to essentially pause the real-time combat and aim at various parts of your enemies. Each shot will burn action points based off of what weapon you're using at the time, and then you'll watch a series of bullet time action sequences as the computer executes your aim shots. Each limb of both you and your enemies has a certain amount of health, and when that runs out, the limb becomes crippled, imposing a status ailment of some sort until a stim pack is used to repair it. The graphics in Fallout 3 are pretty good, though much of the time you can't appreciate them because the game is so damn dark. Probably half the game is spent inside caves, buildings, and caverns, and all of them are so dimly lit that you can barely see a thing. For this reason, I constantly utilize the wait command that allows you to fast forward through time for a series of hours. This way I could actually walk around in the daylight when I was out in the wastelands. One thing that bothered me though is that you can switch to a third person view, but it's very impractical and looks very generic and out of place as you can't control the camera. Why spend a long time creating the face of your character in the beginning if you can't even move the camera to see what you look like? The animation for characters' faces while they talk is a little stiff and doesn't look all that great either, but every line of dialogue in the game is voice acted, and there's even some celebrities including Liam Neeson. Like Mafia 2, the game's soundtrack is loaded with vintage 1940s tracks that when combined with the retro look of the buildings, clothing, and decorations create a pretty amazing environment but I didn't really understand what the 1940s had to do with the plot considering it took place some 300 years after that. Is Fallout 3 the best game ever? Well, not to me at least, but it is pretty good. I didn't find it amazing like others have, but it is pretty enjoyable and gives a lot of bang for your buck. The story didn't draw me in like I was hoping it would, but the wastelands of the former DC, the characters, the situation, and the way it's all presented really gave me the great immersion that I was looking for, especially considering that I'm watching a great show on the Discovery Channel now called The Colony, which reminds me a lot of the types of things you see and participate in while playing through this game. With at least 25 hours of gameplay without including all the side missions and none of the five downloadable contents included in the Game of the Year edition, you're going to have your hands full for a very long time with this title. If you're looking forward to Fallout New Vegas this fall, there isn't a better time than now to pick this bad boy up and get yourself ready to rock and roll. I had many discussions on my Facebook and Twitter accounts already surrounding this game, and if you aren't following me on those networks, you're missing out. What was your favorite feature of Fallout 3? Stay tuned for my reviews of the 5 DLCs and leave your questions and comments below. Check out the full write-up, screenshots, and gameplay footage over at ZeitgeistGameReview.com. Stay up to date by following me on Twitter and check out my other channel Zeitgeist Other for gameplay footage. Don't forget to subscribe and press the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching.